Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, your boy Virtus here and welcome back to the Unreal Engine 4 side scroller series. In today's video we are going to be creating another obstacle that is basically going to be some fire that's going to be in the game and if the player runs into the fire while it's active, it's going to take away the player's health. And while the player is still in the fire, every sort of half second it's going to take away more health, more health and more health. Now it's going to be similarly, uh, it's going to be set up in a similar way to the explosive obstacle that we set up in in the previous video where we pretty much made it explode and take away some of the health with this system it's going to be a little bit quicker in the way that it takes away health so while they're in it it's just going to keep on taking it away taking it away until the player walks out of the fire so let's go ahead and get things started so first things first I'm going to go ahead and jump into my blueprints folder and then I'm going to create a blueprint class and for now I'm just going to call this uh, fire obstacle for now once we've done that, go ahead and open it up, give it a moment to load, and then we're going to add in a particle system for the fire. We are going to be want this being displayed the whole time, so we're just going to add it in as a regular component, drop down, hit particle system, and add it in. And we're just going to call this fire particle system, just like that. And if we go over to the details panel on the right hand side, go to template, and then just set this to fire, you should have this particle system by default. So if I go ahead and compile this, and if I don't go and drag this into the scene, we should sort of get a rough idea about the size in terms of how it looks. So if you guys think this is big enough for you, that's fine. Or if you want to make it a little bit bigger, you can. Just open up your blueprint, grab the particle system, and just set the scale to something bigger on the X, the Y, and the Z. So for me, I'm going to make this twice as big so the player can see it nice and easily. And now if I go into the scene, you can see it's really, really big, really visible now. And that is exactly how I want it. I'm also going to quickly move my little fire particle system up here as well, just so that the player can get to it. And it's not going to be in the way of the explosive stuff that I've got already. So I'm just going to move it up here. And now the next thing that we need to do is we need to set up a way for the player to know when, you know, well, for the engine to know when the player is actually in the fire. So just like before, we need to go ahead and add a trigger box. So go ahead and add that box collision just from add components. And we're just going to call this fire area. Once we've done this, we pretty much need to scale this just to make sure that it goes all the way around the fire here. You don't want to make it go too far as it's going to be a little bit unrealistic if it goes out of the reaches of the fire. Make sure you've got the right sort of height and stuff. I'm not going to worry about the smoke damaging the player for now, that's not too important. So that looks about right to me. So if I go ahead and compile this, move this out of the way, you can see here now the box is only really covering the fire and that is perfect. So what we need to do now, when the player actually begins overlapping with that box collision, we need to tell it to take away some of the health from the player and then if they're still in there, just keep taking it away. So go over to your event graph and then from here we're going to use the fire area, we're going to drag that in and then we are going to create a begin overlap event. So once we've done that, we need to go ahead and cast to the side scroller character. It's the side scroller character is the object that's going to be overlapping it. And also as the side scroller character, we also need to begin taking away some of the player's health. It's quite simple. So from cast the side scroller character, let's just go ahead and set um, player health. And we are pretty much going to take away some of the value from that. So drag out player health, type in float minus float. And then we're going to go ahead and set this to 0.1. So this is going to take 0.1 health away from the player. And then for the A value, we need to make sure we get a reference to player health again. Get player health. So what this is going to do, it's pretty much going to get the value for player health. And then it's going to take away 10% of the health, so 0.1 of that. So we go ahead and compile this and we press play. If we go ahead and run over to that fire now, it should take away... 10% of that player's health. So let's go ahead and test this. I got a couple of these little health drop things in the way, but when you run into it, you can see it took away some of the health, but it only did that once. So we need to do a few things to fix that up. Also, we need to run some checks from that where we pretty much see whether or not the player health is below zero. In and if it is, we need to tell him to die 
um, so the player drops down to the ground. So let's go ahead and add that f that thing first. So add in a branch to the end of your script here. So run this out branch, and then from here we're gonna type we're gonna grab this out and we're gonna type in float, and we are gonna look for less than or equal to because we want to check whether or not the player's health is zero or it's less than zero hook that up and then under the B value we're pretty much gonna leave that set to zero and now from this if it returns true we're pretty much gonna type in def it's not gonna work here so we need to cast to the first uh, to the side scroller character again so cast to side scroller character as side scroller character we need to call the function that we set up previously for def which pretty much tells the player to pause the game and just drops them down to the ground under object wildcard, go ahead and set this to um, go ahead and set this to cut to get player character. Type that in. Whoops. So get player character. That is perfect. Cool. So what this is doing now? Let's quickly go over this. So when the player begins to overlap overlap with the fire area, it's going to cast to the character and it's going to take away 0.1 health. If the, play, the player's health is below zero after they make that change, it's pretty much going to tell the player to die and that is perfect. So let's go ahead and test this and make sure that it works. So I'm going to move some of my little health uh, drop things here as well. I'm going to move these over just so the player doesn't run into them and lose any of their health. I'm going to do the same thing for this as well. And I'm going to press play. And let's see now when we run into this fire, let's see if it's going to kill us off. So run up to the fire, there you are, that's brilliant, and if we run into it again it's going to take some more health, and a little bit more health, and that's great, and if it goes below zero, it should simply kill us off. There you are, and the player is dead, that is perfect, that is all good. So what we need to do though, is while the player is still standing in that fire, we need to tell, it, tell the player to keep taking damage, because if we run into this real quick, and we, when we first go in there, it's going to take away some of the player's health. But the thing is, when I stand in there, it's not going to do anything to him. So what we need to do is pretty much check. We'll have a little delay after we take away a little bit of health. And then check whether or not the player is still in the area. So let's go ahead and set this up. It's quite simple. So open up your fire obstacle again. And then we're also going to create a variable called player in radius just like we did for the explosive thing as well and then just before cast to character we're going to pretty much tell the engine to set this variable to true for begin overlap and then also if we go ahead and drag in our fire area we are going to create an end overlap event so what this is going to do it's pretty much going to allow us to tell the engine to you know just just tell them that the player is no longer in the radius so what I'm going to do is drag in player in radius and I'm going to set that to set and I'm going to hook it up just like that. And for the other actor, I'm just going to hook this up to cast to side scroller character. And then I've got to make sure I have this in the right order as well. So I've got this, I'm going to have cast to side scroller character first. And then afterwards, I'm going to have player in radius it may seem a little bit odd why I'm doing it, just do it and just trust me, it works. Sometimes if you have something between other actor and then you cast two, it's simply going to break your script. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing on this side as well. So I'm going to quickly unlink these by pressing control and then click to get rid of these. Whoops, I'm not doing that. So I'm just going to delete these little links here. So just click the little link and then delete it. I'm going to move this in here. And I'm going to drag this in here just like that. That way it's all in the right order. So for the begin overlap event, we need to make sure we're telling the engine the player is in the radius. And for the second one, for ending the overlap, we need to tell the engine that the player is now out of the radius because they're no longer in the fire. So that is all good. So what we need to do now over here at the end of our little script, if the player hasn't died, we're going to run a delay. And then from that little delay, we need to go ahead and check whether or not the player is in the air is in the radius. So run this out to completed and then just add a branch. And all we're going to do here now is drag in player in radius, get a reference to it. And if they are still in the radius after, say, 0.5 seconds, we are going to take away some more of the player's health. 
So let's go ahead and do this. So for true, we're going to drag this out to set player health over here. And for false, we're going to do nothing because we don't really need to. So if we go ahead and compile this, press play, possess. And if we go ahead and run up to our fire, and hopefully if we stand in it now, every half a second it's going to begin to take some health away from the player. And then once it gets to zero, they're going to fall to the ground and they're going to die. And that is perfect. So that is pretty much everything for our fire system set up and working. I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching once again, guys. Stay awesome. Keep creating. Your boy Virtus, signing out.